Hello, I'm Dr. W. John Martin. We should all be drinking activated water. I'm therefore pleased to provide this overview of the many simple ways that water can be activated. As I explained in an earlier video, activation of the body's fluids is nature's third cellular energy pathway, the first being photosynthesis and the second being food metabolism. The third, or what I like to call the alternative cellular energy pathway, or more simply, the ACE pathway, is an inducible dynamic quality of the body's fluids. It results from the absorption of an environmental force termed KELIA, kinetic energy limiting electrostatic attraction. Electrical charges in chemical molecules can attract KELIA from the environment, providing intermolecular bonding does not mask the electrical charges. Certain dipolar compounds with clearly separated electrical charges can transfer the absorbed energy to nearby water, possibly in an oscillatory manner. Now, once water is sufficiently activated, its separated charges can then absorb Kalia from the environment, leading to further activation. The activation can extend to added water, which if consumed, can enhance the body's ACE pathway. So how do we activate water? First, let me emphasize there are many compounds that can activate water as well as energy devices. The compounds can be placed into five broad categories. In the first category are readily available mineral rich compounds commonly used in organic farming. They include humic and fulvic acids, zeolites, volcanic rock, shungite, a product from Russia, magnesium oxide, and mica. While generally regarded mainly as a source of minerals, their real benefit in farming is more likely that of water activation. They can be rendered much more effective in this regard if they are heated to very high temperatures during or after the extraction process. In the second category, are pharmaceutical compounds with benefits beyond the conditions for what they're normally prescribed. Good examples are procaine and lidocaine, vitamin C and niacin, and dilantin, an anti-epileptic drug. In the third category, I place hydrogen, ozone, chlorine dioxide gas, and in the fourth category, colloidal silver, germanium, and silica. The fifth category is for food-related items including extracts of the leaves of moringa trees, acetava plants, certain essential oils, and cocoa from which chocolate is made. It also includes the alcohol extracts or tinctures of various herbs used in homeopathy. So how do we use these compounds? There are three important principles. The first is that relatively little is required to activate water. For products not in the form of pellets, it's easy to use too much, such that intermolecular bonding restricts the activity. For many of the compounds, one in a thousand dilution in water is appropriate. The second principle is the need to allow for a day or two for the water activation process to proceed. The third principle is to maintain the water in sealed containers lest the more activated molecules are lost by evaporation. Now, once water is energized, the activating compounds can be removed either by progressive dilutions, as in homeopathy, or by filtration through a zero residue filter. This eliminates any concerns about possible toxicity of the activating compound. Indeed, Water can be slowly activated by simply being placed close to previously activated water or to some of the mineral-rich compounds discussed earlier. There are also various energy devices that can be applied to water. The main message from this video is that it's relatively easy and costs very little to activate water. Individuals can become their own investigators in choosing from among the different approaches. The real test is the ability of the water to alleviate the symptoms of the many medical conditions caused by an insufficiency of the food metabolism based second energy pathway. Farmers can also realize benefits 
in terms of agricultural productivity and the quality of their crops. My interest is the role of the ACE pathway as the major defense mechanism against stealth adapted viruses. These are the viruses that are not effectively recognized by the immune system. I'm also interested in whether the ACE pathway contributes some unique qualities to the brain function. Indeed, it is interesting whether the fluctuating electrical activities of the brain and also muscles, including the heart, may act as an antenna for Kalia. Information on these fascinating topics is available in the book Stealth Adapted Viruses, Alternative Cellular Energy ACE and Kalia Activated Water. Inquiries and comments can be sent to wjohnmartin at ccid.org. Thank you very much. Thank you.